And so now we're going to go ahead and look at Mesh Baker. Mesh Baker from Ian Dean allows us to combine meshes and materials to reduce our draw calls or our set pass calls. When we're on performance constrained devices, we're going to be sending information about what we need to draw. And often if we have too many different uh, I'll go into this a little bit more in detail in, uh, in a moment, but if we have too many uh, different objects with too many different materials and we start sending those, uh, you know, to be rendered, uh, we can increase our set pass calls, our draw calls, and that can slow down our devices. So some of the things that what Mesh Baker can do is that uh, it allows us to uh, combine our meshes and materials, like I said. Uh, it has a custom texture packer for efficient texture packing. It can fix models to create, uh, so they create efficient atlases and can share materials. Uh, it works with any material and shader. Uh, we can combine and customize skin meshes it will adjust the UVs, normals, and tangents automatically uh, if there's an issue, and it's non-destructive, so the source assets are never touched. So, um, when we're uh, working on performance-constrained devices, what I was saying just a moment ago, uh, such as mobile or VR, and often that's the same thing, in some cases you're actually rendering VR on a mobile device, uh, we need to manage or control our draw calls or our set pass calls. So typically, every separate object with a unique material in our scene has to be passed from the CPU to the GPU to be drawn or rendered. So every time we have a different material, there will be one of these operations that happens. And there's overhead to these set pass calls. So we should pack as much uh, information as we can into a call to minimize the number of calls. So essentially, it's like, uh, you know, sending a, uh, a truck or a car or a bus, you know, to transfer a bunch of information. And if you put one passenger, the bus trip is going to be the same. So why don't we pack that bus full before driving off and try to be more efficient about how we move our information? So um, to do this, uh, we're going to create a new mesh baker, and this is going to be a texture and mesh baker. And this is a game object and it resides in the scene because it's going to be working in the scene. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and go to game object and we want to create other. And what we want to create is a mesh baker. And we're going to go and create a texture baker and mesh baker. And we can see that it's created that here in uh, our, our scene. And we've got a texture baker and we have a mesh baker. We could probably have made two separate game objects, but when we pick that uh, selection from the menu, they will go ahead and add um, one of each as children. So the mesh baker is simply a child game object to our texture baker. This process, especially when we're dealing with the textures and materials, can be time consuming. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move very quickly and get the, uh, the material started, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give you some more information while I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab sections that I want to um, bake. And so I've set this up to make it a little bit easier to grab. So if I go to my environment, uh, I'm going to take uh, the main island and I'm going to go from ground to fence. And we can see that that's that one island. Now there are some specific things that uh, right now uh, Texture and Mesh Baker doesn't really like to have um, any object that doesn't have a renderer on it. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and make sure that everything is expanded. And I'm gonna grab from the ground all the way down here to the bottom of the fence. And you can see I'm getting their child objects as well, but I want to, using the command or control key, deselect rock patch in my case, because it is just simply a parent game game object, has no renderer on it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. See, it's just a nav mesh obstacle. So I'm gonna, and I can undo. So when I see I select that, now if I hit undo, I go back to my previous selection. So I'm gonna grab all of this material, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make um, a selection. So I'm going to save a selection, save that as selection one. And that's just so that I easily can grab all this material. And then I'm going to go to uh, the texture baker, and then I'm going to lock the inspector. And that means I can come up here to my selection and then grab load selection. And I haven't lost, uh, I haven't lost the focus on the texture baker. And then I'm going to drag all of this in to 
objects to be combined. Kaboom. So that's that central island. I need to create a new empty asset, so I'm going to close this down. And so create an empty asset for combined uh, materials. I'm going to create a folder first, and I'm going to create that folder, and I'm going to call this baked assets, just so I know where it's going. So these are my baked assets, So because it's going to create new assets. I want them separate from the original assets. And then I'm going to create um, an empty asset for the combined material, and I'm going to put that into my baked here, I'm going to call this main island. And closing down the environment, there, just so we can see it, we can see that our baked assets, there's a, um, turn off the inspector there so we can see it. So there's our uh, main island. It keeps track of all of the materials there and the objects. And then here's our combined material that we have right here. So let's come back to our mesh baker and then let's go ahead and bake materials into a combined material. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Reality is it's actually going to be relatively short for sitting here and watching a live stream. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. Now, the question is, is why didn't I select the whole level? This particular process of combining meshes and combining textures is a bit of a balancing act. Um, and you also get into a, a point where you need to look at um, your total assets in your game. One of the things is, is that the way that rendering works is that if you see a small portion of an, uh, an asset or a model that is inside the rendering frustum of the camera, uh, we need to send the whole object to the GPU to be rendered. So if we had selected uh, the entire game level, then at any time we see any piece of the game level, we have to render all of the game level. So one of the things that we need to do is balance off uh, how much we select uh, and how much we combine so that we know that those combined meshes are efficient uh, and that we aren't asking it to actually render too much. So if there's a, something that is uh, going to be outside of the frustum, so with our game is playing, we're on the main island, we don't see the other adjacent islands, we don't want to have them in that combined mesh. Okay, so well that's done. Um, it has finished baking uh, the materials. So then let's look at the mesh baker. And essentially what we're going to say to this is the objects to be combined are going to be the same as the texture baker. We are not going to use a custom list. And so let's bake that. And meshes being simple vertex data much quicker. So we can see that we have combined that. I have to hold on to the combined mesh. See, woo. So we now have our combined mesh. Uh, and if we go back to our selection, we can go to our selection, load selection, and we can turn it off, pink. Um, and then there's our combined mesh right there. 